Uh, with that, let's uh, get started. So the first thing I want to talk about today is the SA series microphones. I think these are one that gets um, overlooked quite a bit by uh, guys in our industry, not um, for any reason in particular, maybe other than just the DMRTA is just so dang cool and uh, everybody gravitates straight towards that, which is great. Um, but there are applications where it's nice to have maybe something smaller or maybe you just don't need everything that a DMRTA can do. So we're going to start with the SA series microphones. We have two um, models of the SA series microphones. They come in a nice uh, kind of retail packaging like this, nice little uh, gift box. And there is the SA4100 and the SA4140i SPL. Uh, these microphones look like this. So these are a iOS based microphone. So that means the end of this has a lightning connector on it. So um, for you Android guys, this is not for you, right? This is gonna be for the iPad, iPhone, those guys. Uh, the cool thing about these is, is they plug straight into your Apple device and away you go. We have an app that goes along with them shown on your screen right there. It's called Mobile Tools. And the Mobile Tools app is gonna give you all the functionality that these microphones are capable of. So these are great for the guys that are um, maybe hobbyists or DIY guys that are kind of getting serious about this. Maybe they got their first DSP. Um, maybe they bought their, you know, or they got their first active system from your shop or whatever the case may be. Um, and they're looking for, you know, hey, I, I paid you guys to tune it the first time if you're a professional. And they go, but you know, I kind of want to do some of this on my own. What can I get? Well, maybe a DMRTA is not um, feasible for them because of cost or whatever uh, else, but the SA series microphones are perfect for that consumer or that kind of uh, what I like to call prosumer, right? They're a little bit more than your average consumer, but not quite um, a professional. So that's where these really come in hand. They're also um, come in handy, I should say. They're also great for professional use as well. Um, for those times where you just need something that's super mobile. Uh, the DMRTA is great and we'll get into all the features on that in a few minutes. Um, but sometimes even that is more than you wanna bring with you um, or you wanna have that set up for one thing and use this for another. So the two differences between them, the 4100 is a RTA microphone with a lightning connector end on it, just like you can see here. So this will plug straight into an iPhone, iPad, uh, or even an iPod touch for that matter. And these will give you a uh, SPL and an RTA. Uh, really, really cool, powerful tool. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that'll tell you that you, you could use RTA with just the microphone built into your phone. Now, could you do that? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, but we all know that the microphone built into your iPhone or iPad was never meant to be an RTA microphone. It was definitely never meant to be an SPL microphone. So that's where having something like this really comes into play. This is a professionally you know, produced really nicely built metal microphone with a nice heavy duty cable on it. Uh, cable length is about uh, three feet, I'd say, uh, right around there. And so I'll plug this into my phone here in just a sec and show you guys a little bit about what this can do. Um, the difference between the two, the 4100 is just that. It is a microphone with a lightning connector end and it's capable of reading up to 105 dB. So it is not intended for SPL use. It's really intended for RTA use, right? Uh, with the 4140i SPL, as is in the name of the product, this one has a higher SPL reading. This will read up to 140 dB, like you can see on your screen right now. Um, but the other cool thing that's really cool on the, or really unique, I should say, on the 4140 uh, is the connections on the bottom. So on the bottom of the 4140i is not only the cable that comes out and goes to your iOS device, but there's also an audio out port for doing polarity testing and that sort of thing. And there's a power plug. Why do we need a power plug on this? This plugs into your iPhone. It is getting power from your iPhone. So what do we need a power plug for? We need a power plug so that if you're doing testing for extended periods of time, we still have a way to charge your device. Because once this is traditionally plugged into your uh, iPhone, so if I take my handy iPhone here, I'll pop it out of its case to make things easy. If I take my iPhone and plug this guy in, Obviously now I have no way to charge my device because that lightning port is being taken up with the microphone. So if I wanted to uh, use this, do some RTA measurements, do some SPL measurements, what have you, and I'm gonna use it for you know, an extended period of time or the battery on my phone is already low, this comes with in the box a power plug so that we can charge the device. 
we can keep your phone charged. And I'll show you real quick while we're here. So in the box, not only do we have a traditional power adapter like so, but we also have a bunch of adapters. So we have all of the international power adapters for um, pretty much every country that I can think of anyway, or all around the world. So you have your standard US power plug, slide that on there. But we also have some uh, European and Asian market uh, power plugs as well. So you have adapters for around the world. You also have a nice little windscreen in here. So we'll get that out of there. So that can slide over our microphone like so. Okay, it comes with that. And it comes with an adapter to use it with a stand. So if you are going to pick up a small stand for this microphone, um, it comes with a uh, standard adapter. So you can just snap this on here and then thread this onto pretty much any mic stand that you're going to go find, uh, whether that's at a, a musical instrument type store or on Amazon or what have you. So you've got some, some cool options there. Uh, the 4100 does not come with all of that stuff because obviously it's not needed, um, but this is pretty cool. Once this is plugged into the wall, we can just plug this into the bottom of the microphone and now it's charging my iPhone as well. So it's pretty slick to be able to do both. With this hooked up, as soon as I plug this into my iPhone and launch the mobile tools app, it pops up and shows me accessory found. And it says SA4140i SPL. Once I click OK, I now have all of these options in the app. You can download this app right now if you wanted to. Uh, even without the microphone, you can still have a look at the app itself. And if I click on RTA, this will bring up my RTA screen and we can see I'm getting a reading as I talk. You'll see it bounce around on the screen there. And we've got a, a pretty detailed RTA for something that's on a smartphone. Now, is this gonna be the same as having it on the DMRTA? No, it's not. Um, resolution wise, this does one octave or one third octave. So there's one octave, obviously the bars are gonna be bigger. You're gonna get less resolution. We'll go to one third octave just by touching down the corner and I get a little bit more detail. But again, for something that you have potentially in your pocket and you can go out to a customer's car or if you're a, a, a home guy, a home theater system or whatever the case may be, whatever it is that you're working on, to be able to take this with the phone that you already carry in your pocket and do a, a quick measurement that's gonna be actually you know, uh, realistic and detailed and accurate, that's pretty impressive if you ask me. So pretty slick. If we exit the RTA screen, I can also go into SPL. Click on that real quick. Turn this sideways so you can see it. And we can get a SPL measurement. La, la, la. Get loud. And you can see it right on your screen there. And this has peak hold. It has all sorts of functionality. Um, you know, we could do probably a whole class just on this app because there's a lot that it can do. Uh, but I'm just kind of going over the basics today. There's also a polarity test in here. Uh, there's a little tab that says polarity. And very similar to the DMRTA, we're going to get a polarity test screen up there. And it's going to give you a big positive or negative. And this will put out the, um, the pops or the clicks, whatever you want to call them. You can just use that audio out that's on the bottom of this microphone. The audio out is a headphone jack style uh, you know, quarter inch or eighth inch, excuse me, output. So you could just use a male to male cable, uh, go to the aux in on the radio or what have you, and away we go. So pretty slick. Um, there's really not much that, uh, you know, you can't do for something that's this portable. Uh, I've never really seen anything else quite like this for what it does. So again, pretty slick for something that's super, super portable, something that you can take with you uh, out to a customer's car in the parking lot. And if you need something hyper portable or something that's a little less expensive, um, it's a great tool. Now, I think what happens a lot of times too is guys will start by checking that piece out and going, hey, this is all that I need. Uh, this does RTA. I'm doing more uh, DSP systems. I'm doing more systems where I want to tune them using an RTA, so on and so forth. And that's great. You can certainly do that using the SA series microphones, right? Because you have a acoustic RTA. But I think the thing that gets lost on a lot of um, uh, consumers, prosumers, and even some entry level techs is there's a difference between RTAs. You have RTAs that just do acoustic measurements, and then you have RTAs that can do acoustic and electrical. So on that topic, we will uh, move on to the DMRTA. We make sure, yep, no questions there on the SA series. So we'll move on just, to- Just real quick, um, somebody on Facebook, uh, Joseph Norton, my homie in Arkansas, 
or yeah. wherever you are. Uh, I was asking it. if there's a difference in the way the two mics read on RTA, meaning the 4100, uh, is it more accurate? Uh, on RTA than the 4140. And, and no, they're the same. The only thing with the high one is it stays within 1% tolerances on the uh, sensitivity up to a higher um, uh, decibel range. So yeah. no differences. Um, the simplicity of these microphones is, is really what the benefit of this, particularly in the sales you know, area. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I go back a, a few years ago and uh, I was at a retailer and the, the customer had brought his car in for the third time. He didn't have a DSP. Um, it was factory set up and he swore that the passenger side front speaker was like way louder than any other speaker in the car. And without a DSP or anything like that, I just real quickly showed him, you know, that in fact, when holding the microphone right at that speaker, it was exactly the same volume um, <laughs> on both the driver side and passenger side. So really, really cool piece to get in there. And if you have something like awkward or, you know, a, cu yeah. a customer that's slightly, uh, you know, maybe he lost hearing in one side of his, <laughs> his, his like his, many of us have. <laughs> right. So he had, he had, you know, one ear that uh, obviously yeah. maybe he had damaged recently or something like that. Uh, but but that these are great really tools to be able to show. Yeah, because these are a great tool too for not only techs, but think of it for sales guys, right? I mean, not every sales guy may want to invest in a DMRTA, but most sales guys, if it was going to make their life easier and make them be able to do their job better, I feel like most sales guys would probably invest in something like one of these SA series microphones um, if it meant that they were going to, you know, uh, get their job done easier, sell more systems, make more money, you know, whatever you want to say. Um, but what a great tool for a sales guy to be able to literally keep in the front counter or in his back pocket for that matter, you know, and be able to go out to a customer's car and without having to grab a technician from the back go out there and do maybe a quick RTA reading or like Chris said, a quick SPL measurement and, and you know, either prove something or show a deficiency or whatever the case may be. Yeah. How many times as a retailer or an installer or something, you know, um, where a customer maybe goes to a competitor down the road and has, you know, a bunch of stuff installed. You know, one of the classic cars was, you know, a, a Chrysler 300 with Beats, you know, yep. and they use a summing device and they have this overlap that creates this massive amounts of uh, upper middle, you know, frequency response. Mm -hmm. What a better tool to go out there and show the customer, hey, by the way, uh, you know, it's ear piercing because of this. So let's get you into a DSP or something like that. And you can show them real quickly. And, you know, how difficult is it to understand a customer when they come to you and try to explain an issue? This is an yeah. easy way to acoustically go through and see and visualize the issue. So um, absolutely. Cool I mean, stuff. how many times do we all go out to or supposed to go out to customers cars hopefully you're going out every single time and if you are going out every single time and you are saying you know here uh play your system for me let's talk about what you don't like what is it that you're lacking and you know if you go out to that car and they play it for you maybe it's all factory maybe it's got an aftermarket system whatever but if they explain that hey it's lacking blank fill in the blank it's lacking mid base um but you have an rta in your hand and you know you're looking at it going well, actually, it's got a ton of mid bass. Um, you know, maybe maybe something else is lacking. Maybe it's actually missing high frequency or mid range or something like that. Maybe they don't know how to describe the problem. I can't tell you how many times you know we would have complications where the customer explains that they need one thing and actually what they needed was something completely different and now you're in this weird awkward space of well it's already sold and installed but you know there's kind of no going back blah, 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 um, you know, it would be an invaluable tool to be able to figure that stuff out ahead of time. So yeah, 95% of your customers um, are not going to understand frequency response. So how do they tell right. you that, you know, um, something is is bothering them like, oh, it just starts to do this, or it sounds, you know, it pierces my ear here. Well, yeah. where it sounds you hollow, know, or yeah. it sounds tinny. Well, what does that mean? You know, what does tinny to me mean, mean something completely different than tinny to them, so. Yeah, and then um, before you move on back to the yep. DMRTA, I also wanted to, I put up there for everyone to see on the group chat on Zoom, also a product called the U-Test mic. Um, just as a reference, you know, the SA microphones are really where we sell 
um, the most of those and manufacture the most of them. But there is a USB style one. So if you are somebody who, um, you know, is needing a, a, a different kind of microphone, there's that option as well from us. Um, yeah, that's a great point. I, sh I shouldn't say that the um, only guys we can help are Apple guys because we do have those U-test mics that can be used with laptops and, and, and other devices. They're just a little bit more high end, a little bit more professional of a, a grade microphone. So yep. um, yeah, I kind of skipped over those. Thank you for bringing those up. Yep. So with that, let's move on to the DMRTA. So most of you that are here today are probably uh, already familiar with the DMRTA, or at least you've heard of it. Maybe you've seen it before. Um, but you know, these trainings are not just for the people in the room. These trainings are also watched later and seen by all sorts of people after the fact. So we're going to go through the DMRTA a little bit as far as the device itself, as well as some of the kits that are available. So for those that aren't a, a you know, DMRTA expert, um, the DMRTA is an incredible tool and it's really the modern installer's best friend in, in my opinion. Um, you know, with the way cars are coming today as far as these multi-channel systems with, excuse me, discrete amplified channels that are separately crossed over, that are, you know, uh, pre-EQ'd a lot of times and have all these dynamic EQs and, and um, all of these different features that, that OEM manufacturers are building into these factory systems, you really need a tool to be able to analyze signals, uh, you know, figure out what's going on with these cars before you really start integrating into them. And to me, you know, years ago, for, I don't know, maybe five, 10 years ago, something like that, you could probably, I don't want to say get away with, but you could get by without this type of tool. You could still be a successful shop. You could do cars in and out all day long and, and pretty much get by without something like this. Should you have one? Yes. But, you know, like I said, 10 years ago, you could probably get by without it because the cars weren't as complicated. Sure, you were going to run into some headaches here and there, but for the most part, you could kind of get by. Today, I don't think that's the case. I think to be successful in today's marketplace with what's going on with cars today, and, and even, you know, I'm not even talking fancy cars. I'm, I'm talking basic vehicles these days have some pretty elaborate systems by, you know, by most people's standards. And even some of the least expensive cars on the road are coming with some systems that can be a pain to integrate with. They don't have to be elaborate. They don't have to be a 24 speaker sound system. It could be a four speaker sound system that's still a pain to integrate with. So those are the types of things where a DMRTA really is an invaluable tool. Um, I was talking with a gentleman the other day about motorcycles, and that's another one where this really comes into play. You know, you may be the motorcycle expert today, but when that 2024 Harley Davidson rolls in with that factory stereo, you aren't going to know what's coming out of that thing. It could have just four speakers in it from the factory or two speakers or whatever, but you're really not going to know what's going on with that signal just by your previous experience, right? And if you just dive into that and start to integrate with high to low adapters or DSPs or whatever it is, you're really kind of guessing and you're hoping for the best and you're taking a chance there and and you're you know you're kind of using that first one as a guinea pig a little bit because you just don't know you can do all the research in the world but if it's a brand new vehicle that nobody's touched yet or a brand new bike that nobody's touched yet it's going to be really hard to do research on it so having the right tool for the job to be able to go in and actually analyze those signals and see what's going on ahead of time is going to make things so much easier. So with that, let's look at the DMRTA and what it actually does and what features are included with it. So the DMRTA tool itself is what we're talking about first. That comes in the uh, white box here. That's the DMRTA tool. And if you were to buy the DMRTA tool itself, this is what you'll get. You'll get the DMRTA uh, box with the tool itself inside. And we've got a 110 volt power plug and a USB cable to con uh, connect it to a computer and an owner's manual. Okay, so that's what comes with just the tool itself. And we'll dive into some of the accessories and some of the other things that you're gonna need in just a minute here. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about features and software. So the DMRTA has the tools that you're seeing on your screen right now built inside of it. 
It is this amazing metal box that has an oscilloscope, an RTA, an SPL meter, a polarity checker, and a voltage meter all in one product. But what makes it even more unique is the inputs and outputs section. And you can see on your screen there in front of you, it has pretty much everything that you could ask for as far as doing mobile installation. So, um, you know, looking at the product itself, the XLR connector there that says mic, this is gonna be for your uh, acoustic measurements. This is for your RTA measurements. So when we want to actually analyze the acoustic performance or the acoustic measurements of a vehicle, we're gonna use a uh, XLR style professional microphone. We offer a couple different ones and we'll get into those in a moment. But right here on my desk, I have a uh, CM20 uh, basic microphone, okay? So with this mic plugged in, we can do our acoustic measurements. We can, you know, take readings of a car, see where its deficiencies are, see where we have peaks and valleys, all that type of stuff. With the oscilloscope, we can measure, obviously, the signal itself, um, but we can do, obviously, a lot more than that. With the RTA especially, one of the things that I like to make clear and the difference between, say, having a DMRTA and having one of our SA series microphones is the ability to do electrical measurements with the RTA. And I think it's one of the most important things that the DMRTA can do. So if you are working on, say, that 2024 Harley Davidson and you have no idea what that signal is like, you are kind of assuming maybe that it's full range because it's being fed to just a pair of six and a halves or whatever this bike ends up coming with, but we don't really know. Maybe they've high passed it. Maybe they've crossed it over to not blow up those little speakers at high volume. We have no idea, but with an RTA that can accept uh, electrical measurements, we can find that out because being able to take a microphone and holding it up to the speaker itself um, like I said on this example, say this brand new Harley, holding a microphone up to that speaker itself isn't really going to prove anything. Um, it's going to show you what the acoustic response is like, but just because there's a, a you know, a drop off in the response there in the low end doesn't necessarily mean that the signal isn't there. That could be a function of the speaker not being able to reproduce it. It could be a function of a couple of different things. So being able to actually take electrical measurements with an RTA is, in my opinion, one of the most important things that this can do. Um, we also, of course, have our voltage meter, polarity checker, SPL meter all built in, and you can uh, switch around the inputs and play with these things in software. Um, we're going to get into that stuff in a little bit, but I do want to talk about the software real quick. So for those curious, the DMRTA software is an app that runs on uh, just about every popular platform. It will run on your iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch. It will also run on your Android phone, your Android tablet. Uh, it'll run on a Windows PC or laptop. Um, and it'll also run on a Mac, desktop, laptop, so on and so forth. So pretty much every popular um, platform we have the app available for. And the app is free. Uh, you can put that on pretty much anything and be able to uh, play nice with the DMRTA. One of the things I also like to always cover when talking about the DMRTA is the style of connection. We have two uh, ways to connect with the DMRTA. Uh, the USB cable that's included with it is going to plug into the top of it, and this is what's going to actually connect to your PC or Mac computer. So if you are using a Mac uh, desktop or laptop or a PC Windows-based um, desktop or laptop, we do have to use the USB. Bluetooth is not an option when using a desktop or laptop computer, regardless of the platform. The Bluetooth functionality is going to be for uh, connecting to smartphones, tablets, and that sort of thing, regardless of whether they are Android or iOS based. And we'll get into the Bluetooth adapter and how all that stuff works here in just a little bit. But I just like to make clear that the DMRTA app is available for all these different platforms. It is not locked down to one specifically, and it's something that can run on just about anything. So with that, let's get into some of the uh, DMRTA kits. So for those of you wondering which kit is for you and what you're supposed to get, and well, do I need this part and that part? Should I order it all separately? Should I get it in kit? What should I do? Here's kind of the breakdown. So again, when you're buying just the DMRTA, like I showed you in the white box, you are getting just the tool itself. There is no microphone, there's no mic cable, there's no test leads. This is just the test tool. When you get a uh, base kit, it's gonna come in a beautiful blue case like this. These are a really nice kind of uh, Pelican style case. Uh, they're molded in this beautiful audio control blue, the nice uh, badging and everything on them. And as you can see on your screen there, this is going to come with just about everything except for your DMRTA. 
So when I flip this open, looks just like the picture on your screen there. This is for the guy who has already bought a DMRTA and a microphone and a Bluetooth chip. So if you've already purchased one of these, maybe you bought your DMRTA, you know, right when they first came out, maybe you were an early adopter or something like that. And now you're seeing these cool cases coming out. You're going, well, gee, I really want one of those. Uh, this is a cool way to kind of complete your setup. Um, so if you've already got a mic, you've already got your DMRTA, and you've already got the Bluetooth chip, these are a great way to go. The base kit is going to include pretty much everything else. Okay, so you can see all the different stuff that it comes with on your screen there. Um, one of the things that I like to point out that it comes with that's really, really cool, and it comes in both of the blue cased kits. Let me pull it out here and I'll show you. Is the guitar pick. It's the guitar pick. The guitar pick, yes, the guitar <laughs> pick is incredibly important and very, very cool. You gotta have that for, you know, doing game settings, etc. Uh, <laughs> I always love to list that on the included accessories too, just to see if anybody catches it. Uh, but no, one of the favorite things that it comes with is this USB cable. So this is a unique cable. It's a USB male to male, A to A cable. So when you think of your typical USB cable, this is it, but it has that end on both sides. So why do we need this and what is it for? This is for the front of your DMRTA. So when you're looking at your DMRTA itself, there is a whole bunch of connections on the front, but over to the side is the digital outputs, right? So let me go back a slide so you can see it. On the far side there where it says digital out, you've got your digital coaxial, your optical, and a USB. That USB is an output. That is not for connecting to a computer. That is for connecting to a head unit that can read USB drives and play files from USB. So we include this cable because the connection that's on the front of this is the same thing. It looks like the face of your head unit or you know the port on your uh, aftermarket or factory radio. So you would need a male-to-male -male cable to connect the two together, which is kind of a weird cable. It's not something you're usually going to go find at, you know, whatever, Office Depot, Best Buy, something like that. They might have them, but it's kind of a funky cable. It's not something you're probably going to have laying around the house. So we included one in here. It's even molded in a nice audio control blue, which is kind of cool. And what this does is when you plug this into your DMRTA, this is going to allow it to literally show up as a thumb drive. Because basically what's built into this, you guys, is a thumb drive. There's about 10 gigs or so of available space on there. And that's where we store the files that are included on the DMRTA. So the files that come on there are sine wave, pink noise, and square wave information. So that you have all the test tones you could want. You have pink noise. You have all that stuff that we need for testing. But <clears throat> what if you want to put some music tracks? What if you want to have some of your favorite test tracks available as well? Well, traditionally, you're going to either Bluetooth them from your phone, you're going to have that test disc that's all scratched up because you've had it for five years or longer, or you're going to have that thumb drive that got ran over in the shop and so on and so forth, if you're anything like my shop. So this allows us to literally store everything on one device. You can put all your favorite test tracks on there, and now every vehicle you hop into, not only do you have this incredible test tool to do everything that you'll need, but you also have a way to connect it. So you can uh, output those test tones via this USB cable, but you can also do it through the uh, physical outputs as well. And we'll get into that in a minute when we uh, get into the software a little bit more. So. Uh, on to the bigger batter kit, the one I think most everybody's excited about, and that's the Pro Kit. So the Pro Kit is great for those of you who don't have a DMRTA. You've been maybe thinking about a DMRTA or, you know, you're thinking about which one to get. You've heard about this thing and you think, yeah, you know, we should really have one of these. We're starting to do more advanced cars. We're starting to do more new uh, late model vehicles. We're starting to do more DSPs. We're, you know, we're, we're moving up. Um, or you just want to keep with the times, honestly, uh, because to be a successful shop, I think in, in this era of vehicles, you're going to need a tool like this. And the DMRTA is literally the best value for this type of testing tool. Could you go buy a separate RTA that is less expensive than a DMRTA? Sure. You could go buy an oscilloscope that's maybe less expensive. Maybe. Um, you could go buy all these tools separately, but once you add all of them up to the cost is significantly higher than a DMRTA, even in the pro kit form. Um, you're going to spend two to three times, if not more, uh, getting all of these tools. And then you still have to have them all separately. You have to put AAA and AA batteries in them. You have to deal with the idiosyncrasies of each device. This really keeps everything together in one compact unit that's easy to use. And you'll see that a little bit when we dig into the software. 
I, so I would say I would say any anybody out there. I mean, there's 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 a bunch of us watching today, and if you've ever installed a, a summing device of any kind of any brand, you need you should have this tool. I mean, if you've ever once installed a summing device, do you know why you installed the summing device? Do you know what happened when you summed those channels? You know. This is, this is just basically what is necessary to, to, for us to do our jobs and, and make good sound great, right? So, you know, we, when we did the DMRTA going back two years ago and started a, the work on, on it, um, you know, that's the reason why it was created was because we were, you know, selling a lot of LC7Is. I mean, LC7Is sell in the thousands of pieces. And so many guys would sum uh, because they were using an LC7i, you know? It was like, oh, they needed a multi-channel device, so let's just sum it anyways, you know? Or they don't mess with it because they, don't, they didn't even know that you have to open it up to unsum it or something like that, you know? So how cool is it that you can just take this, go to the main output on a summing device, and it electronically see exactly what you're working with, you know? No, if hey, this was a good idea to use this summing device, or hey, you know what, maybe I should use an LCQ1 because, man, I have a huge spike right here at this frequency, and I really need an EQ to do what's, what's, what's necessary. So, yeah. um, you know, honestly, guys, if you even once in the last year installed an LC7i or any summing device or any DSP, you should be using this as a tool. I mean... Um, not because not because we need to sell them. Um, we like to sell them, but this was a tool created for the 12 volt industry for you guys to see success like you've never seen success before. Um, and is it simple? Yes, it's simple. Is there more you know like high you know AP type equipment that you could use also? Absolutely, sure. you know. But this is the tool to get in, do stuff easily, not have to unplug one tool, plug in another one, you know, bounce around. Every yeah. time you want to plug in, uh, you know, if you're going from a, your, your SA30, you know, uh, old school um, RTA to, to an O-scope, and then you're also going and using your um, face checker, and, you know, it's, it's three different things. So... If you bust this out, use it across the board. Use it to set your levels. Use it for, you know, everything. So, um, yep. yep. You know, uh, yep. something uh, Mark at Car Audio Fabrication uh, just messaged and said that he just released a video where he used uh, the DMRTA today. So, um, oh, sweet. looking forward to checking that out. But, but he also mentioned he feels like a rocket scientist because he can, <laughs> you know, anytime you bust out that blue case yep. and you walk over. Um, I'll be playing with my car later today and playing with it. And I'm sad no none of you guys will be around to, because I feel the same way. Like, woohoo! Look at this! Like, I want everybody to see me walking out to do right. some measurements, you know, with the with the blue case. Well, that's one of those things I always tell guys too when I would go and do trainings at stores and and you know big training type stuff was you know, we all talk about being professional and having the right tools for the job. And this is absolutely the right tools for the job. But part of that is also kind of looking the part, you know, if, if you are having customers come in and they are, you know, doing some research online or they're doing research at home or they're on a forum or whatever it is, which a lot of our customers are today, you know, they're, they're getting to the point where they know enough to know um, how are you going to integrate with my car? How are you going to tune my car? Do you have an RTA? Are you going to tune it by ear? Um, I started having customers come in and ask me those questions. And this was, you know, a couple of years ago and they're coming in and I was not in a major metropolitan area. I was kind of out in the sticks and I was having customers come in and say, Hey, are you going to tune my car by ear if I buy an amp from you? And if your answer was yes, they were really kind of, you know, uh, frowned upon that and went, Oh, yeah, I was really hoping you had an RTA, you know, or I was really hoping you had, you know, the right tools. And so, I think that's a big part of it. It's the same reason you maybe, you know, painted your shop floors or have nice cabinets in your shop. You want to look professional. You want to look the part. Having the right tools to do that is a big part of that. And nothing looks better than pulling out a pro kit. So with that, with the pro kit, this is definitely the way to go if you don't have a DMRTA yet. Because when we open this up, and everything is beautifully laid out in there in this nice foam case with all your goodies, everything's ready to go. This is definitely the best way I can think of to get into 
having the right tools. So in here, we've got our microphone. We've got our CM10 microphone, which is actually the nicer microphone that we offer. We've got our BT24, which is our Bluetooth chip. So this is gonna allow you to connect to the unit via a iPad, cell phone, tablet, whatever it is that you've got. And then we have our not only 110 power supply, but we also have our 12 volt power supply. So if you are gonna be in the vehicle for a long time, you don't have to drag an extension cord out to the customer's vehicle. Uh, you can just plug it in the cigarette lighter and give it a charge that way. On the topic of charging, the DMRTA does have a lithium ion rechargeable battery inside of it. We normally see about three to four hours on a charge. Um, if you are running the unit on battery power, be aware that it will shut off after some inactivity. So after I think it's about five minutes, three to five minutes of not using it, it will power itself down to conserve its own battery. Um, if you're continuously using it, it won't shut off on its own. Uh, and then if you plug it in for charging, of course, it's just a 12 volt charger. So it's just feeding 12 volts into that rechargeable battery. You don't have to put batteries in it or anything silly like that. One of my favorite things though, that comes in this kit and Todd brought it up and I appreciate that. I wanna make sure to show this off a little bit is some of the test leads that come in here are super, super cool. So we wanted to make sure that we gave you guys just about everything that you could need when you're working on these vehicles. And this is one of my favorite ones. So this is a Phoenix connector, which is the little four pin removable connector um, for generally speaker level testing. And what this is that we've included is a mini Phoenix connector to spring loaded uh, test leads. So you are ready to go to strip a little bit of wire or grab a pin at a Molex harness or a Molex connector, I should say, or at a factory amp harness, something like that. And these are spring loaded retractable. They have like a J hook on the end of them. The camera is never going to capture that. So I'm not going to bother trying to show it, but these have a little J hook end. So they actually spring and hold on to the wire. They're really, really cool. They're about oh, six feet long or so, and they come pre-terminated ready to roll. They're all soldered and, and beautiful. And then we also include the RCA low level version with the same clip connectors on there, same length, about six feet. And these test leads come in both kits, both the pro kit and the base kit. So either way, you're gonna have what you need. Um, you know, one of the other things that, uh, you know, we always try to talk about anyway with the DMRTA, uh, and I mentioned it earlier a little bit, was the software and what we can do with that. So I'm going to get into the software stuff here in just a second. But before we do that, I also want to mention the checklist. So the checklist is something that um, Mr. Bennett and I came up with. Uh, with some cooperation from Educar and getting um, info and results and ideas from reps all across the industry, all across the country, all over the place, uh, even some international guys. So we, we had a lot of contribution from all sorts of different people with ideas and how to make this better. It's been revised a couple of times. And right now we have um, what we think is a, a pretty comprehensive checklist for guys to go through when they pull in a vehicle. So what I found as a trainer that happens a lot is we show them the tool, they understand that they need the tool, they understand why they need the tool, so they buy it and they get it shipped and it shows up at their shop and unfortunately it ends up sitting in the corner of the shop because they don't fully understand when to use it and why. When do I pull out this tool? What is it that I use this for? I understand that it's an RTA, but when do I use that? I understand that it's an oscilloscope, well, why do I need that? When is it that I'm going to use that feature? So what this really does is not only tells you when to use which feature, you can see the big dark blue uh, headings there tell you which feature to use in the software, but it also kind of walks you through. So if you're pulling in a vehicle that you've never worked on before or something that you're not familiar with, or maybe you have worked on it before, but you just you know, never really tested it. You kind of just winged it and, you know, flew by the seat of your pants and got some okay results. Maybe it could have been better though if some testing was done. So the idea is we pull in a vehicle and, you know, maybe we start to disassemble it, but we don't start to put any equipment into the vehicle until we go through and do some testing. And I know there's probably going to be some sales guys and some techs that are rolling their eyes when they hear that and they go, oh yeah, who has time for that? But think of it this way. If you were to take 15 minutes 20 minutes, even a half an hour, and do this testing when you pulled in that vehicle, if it ends up saving you two hours worth of headache, or God forbid, a customer coming back with a problem, wasn't that 20 minutes or half hour worth it? To me, it certainly is. Definitely worth it in that example. Um, but really what we want to do is just maximize results, right? 
because when we're integrating into these vehicles, if we don't know what that signal is that we're tapping into, even if we're not doing a DSP, we're not doing a DSP, we're not doing a five channel, we're just doing a sub amp, okay? All we're doing is adding base to this imaginary vehicle. But if all we're doing is adding base, but we don't really know what any of the signals in that vehicle look like, and we just start tapping into speakers, hoping to find something that has enough info in it to run a, a you know an LC2i Pro and a sub amp or whatever it is, you're really guessing, right? And so you may tap into a signal that you think is full range. Maybe you hooked up a test speaker and you see the speaker cone moving and you go, okay, great. So you hook it up to your LC2i Pro, you hook it up to your sub amp and away you go. But when it's all done, maybe it's lacking low end. Maybe it's lacking the real low base. That very well could be because that signal you tied into was pre-crossed over, but you had no idea, right? So now what? Now you get to go back through you get to undo part of your install, clip some zip ties, try to find a different signal. And you know, maybe it's the end of the day. Maybe it's the customer's already there to pick it up and they're not happy with the way it sounds. There's so many things that can happen that are just not a good experience, right? They're not a good experience for you because you're frustrated now and you're tearing apart your pretty install, but they're a horrible experience for your customer. They came to pick up their vehicle and if you didn't notice that it was lacking and they've had to tell you and now bring it back or they never left the parking lot, that's a terrible experience. And that's not good for you. It's not good for your shop. It's not good for your branding. It's not good for our industry. It's not good for anybody, right? Because the next time they get a new car, they may just decide, you know what, that was a hassle last time. I'm just going to stick with my factory stuff. This is good enough. And obviously as an industry, that's not what we want. And that's really not what consumers want. They want to have that great experience. We just need to make sure that we're providing that. So I think this really goes along with that. So this uh, checklist is available from our website. It's in our knowledge base. It's also in our Facebook groups under the documents section. So if you want to download this, it's free. You can download it and print them out, have them on a clipboard uh, next to your DMRTA or on your testing tuning cart, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I think that's a, a pretty invaluable tool and it's helped a lot of shops out there that just didn't know exactly when to use each feature. Uh, now they know exactly when to use those and how. So with that, uh, I'm going to get into the software. Chris, if there's any questions you want to field while I'm getting this launched, now's a good time for that. No, no, I would just, I would just say, you know, I would like to talk about the responsibility that we all have, us as a manufacturer, you guys as a consumer, um, any of the sales reps. I mean, we have a responsibility to make sure, you know, that we are getting the most out of our systems, right? Um, how many times have you, as an installer, installed the exact same amplifier and the exact same subwoofer in the exact same box into one car and it pounds? And you're like, oh my gosh, this customer is going to love it. The exact same setup you do in a different car and you're like, mm, I know I can yeah, get more out of it. <laughs> Why the heck would you ship that? You know what I mean? Like, you know, this is the tool that you need to go in and find out, hey, you know what, I grabbed the rear speaker, like so many people want to do is just grab one, a single rear speaker um, and, and run that to, you know, a speaker level input on an amplifier. Well, how do you know the frequency response? You know, if you've ever had meh bass response, chances are you're just not getting it, you know? So these tools, guys, are, are imperative to make sure that, uh, if you're a dealer, your customers are getting their money's worth, you know? Um, a base package of $800 is a base package of $800, you know? Uh, a base package of $1,200 is a base package of $1,200. Let's make sure that you're giving them their $1,200 worth by using the right tools, you know? Um, all of these tools can play a part in that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's all do our best to make sure that we're providing uh, systems that exceed our, our expectations. I agree. I think that's a really good point too. Um, you know, I, I like your description of meh, <laughs> you know, we should never be shipping meh. It, it should always be, this is our best foot forward. And I think that uh, that's super important. So I've got the um, DMRTA software up here on the screen right now, and I just have it on a uh, microphone, but I just wanted to take you guys on a tour of the software, give you guys some ideas and examples on kind of how we can use this. Um, timing wise, we probably don't really have time to go through, uh, you know, the entire checklist step by step. We've done that in a previous training anyway, but I just kind of want to take you through the different tabs of the DMRTA. I'll show you some examples of kind of how I would use it and, and some things that we can do. So um, right now I have a microphone hooked up to it. I'm using the 
uh, CM20 microphone, which is this little black microphone sitting next to me right here. So this is what I'm using. It's plugged into the front of the DMRTA and you know, you can see the response on the screen. So like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, as far as resolution goes and being able to uh, really identify dips and, and peaks and valleys and things like that in your audible response in a vehicle, this is really where this is gonna come into play. This is where it's gonna come into its own. The SA series microphones do a great job of giving you a basic tool to do that. But the resolution, like I said, at its best is going to be one third octave, which is what you're seeing on your screen right now. So if we want to get into more detailed stuff and we want to see even more resolution over here on the right hand side, we can see it's on one third. I can also switch this to one sixth and one twelfth octave resolution. So you can see my voice bouncing around on the screen. But one of the things that's really, really cool with this uh, RTA software and some of the things that we can do with it is this middle section here that says RTA memories. And this allows us to save basically screenshots of the response on the screen. So I'm gonna keep talking as I do this and I'm gonna hit store number one and we're gonna basically store a screenshot of my voice in the system. So now if I go to RTA memories and I bring up recall one, you can now see my voice in the background there. So what I'm gonna do momentarily here is just unplug my microphone so that you can see it. So you can see ghosted in the background. That was my voice at the time when I hit store number one. So you can picture all the cool things that we can do with this. We can do a before and after uh, of maybe a, a system that was put in by another shop. Maybe you're trying to get better response out of it. Um, maybe your customer complained about no high frequency or uh, not enough mid, mid range, or mid base or whatever the case may be, whatever the complaint was or whatever the issue was, you can actually visualize that, take a screenshot of it or a capture um, and store that in the RTA memory. And then after you have fixed the problem with tuning or equipment or installation or whatever the case may be, you can go back in, run some pink noise, do these tests again and you know see what your results are and maybe even show them to your customer if they're uh, interested in getting into the nitty gritty stuff and actually seeing the result. So those RTA memories are pretty slick. You actually have you know six different uh, ones to store as well as six recalls there. And we also have something in here called the audio control house curve. So the house curve is something that um, gives technicians basically something to shoot for. Uh, it gives them an idea of something to, you know, uh, basically a goal um, to try to look at when they are analyzing these systems. So, you know, um, somebody, we get a lot of questions uh, of installers asking if they can import their own house curve. Um, and all I would say on that is I would plug in your DMRTA electronically to uh, your, your DSP that you're using and create an electrical signal that you can just do, um, you know, a, a, an RTA memory on, and then you can recall that, and there you go, that's your house curve. So that's one easy way to do that. Um, somebody asked about the difference between the CM10 and the CM20. The CM10 is a very, very, very robust microphone. Um, it is a microphone that has been like the standard um, it lasts forever, you know, and true. Um, it's not as sensitive, but um, it is within 1% tolerances up to 120 dB. Um, so that's really our go-to microphone um, that we recommend, that we use. We also have, you know, the Josephson microphone, which is, you know, more of an industrial grade uh, precision microphone. Um, also available. And the CM20 is kind of the entry level. Um, you know, it's not going to handle being dropped probably, you know, more than a dozen times like the CM10 might. Um, yeah. So it's not as robust and it will stay um, up to 1% tolerances up to 105 dB. So uh, CM10 is the go-to, a little bit higher, um, you know, uh, precision up, up higher in the scale. So that's really the yeah. one we recommend because, um, you know, in our years of having uh, RTAs, um, we that one has been the one that's really stuck around as the go-to um, and, uh, and bulletproof, so to speak, so. Absolutely, and that's why the CM10 is included in the kit. A lot of people assume that we're going to include the least expensive microphone or something like that in the Pro Kit, and that is not the case. We actually include the uh, slightly more expensive, better, um, you know, a little bit more robust, like Chris said, and also higher SPL reading uh, CM10 microphone. So that's actually the one that's included, which is pretty cool. 
So uh, on the RTA side of things here too, one other thing I wanted to point out is a couple of other features in here. You can see your vertical scale off to the left. If your reading is off the charts like this and you can't see anything, we want to increase this vertical scale until we can get that reading on the screen or we would want to uh, decrease our sensitivity uh, up at the top of the screen there in order to make it fit on the screen and see what we need to see. So if you're getting a signal that even at 90 dB uh, vertical scale is still off the charts, we we'll wanna you know, take down that sensitivity so that you can actually uh, get a, a good visual on it here on the screen. So the other cool thing with the RTA is up here at the top of the screen where it says microphone, I can also select what input I want to read. So like I mentioned earlier, the fact that this does electrical measurements, I think is super, super important. Before we get into the electrical measurements, one other thing I wanna bring up, and it's just a quick tip and a ton of guys call and miss this one, and that is phantom power for the microphone. So professional microphones like the CM10 and the CM20 are going to require uh, 48 volts of phantom power. That's what allows them to work. Up here in the corner where it says audio control and you see this 48V that's lit up in blue, this is what turns on the phantom power on the DMRTA. And if you're looking at the DMRTA itself, there's a little red LED indicator on there that actually shows when that phantom power is working. So if I turn that off, you'll notice on the screen that the microphone is no longer functional. That's because I turned off power to it. So if you just got your DMRTA for the first time, you're taking it out of the box, you're setting it up, you go to do your first RTA measurement, and you're like, why doesn't this work? Why can't I make this thing do anything? Chances are you didn't turn on the microphone power. So just a quick tip before we moved on to something else. So on the RTA, one of the other things that I wanted to uh, talk about was the ability to look at other measurements, right? So I was mentioning earlier the ability to do um, electrical measurements. So instead of having the microphone, what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to actually select my speaker input, which is going to be that little uh, four pin connector there, the little Phoenix connector I showed you earlier, those test leads. That's what I'm using right now is I have test leads coming from the DMRTA uh, to this factory radio. And basically what I've done is just tapped one of the speaker level outputs and I can have a look at what pink noise looks like coming out of this radio. So I'm playing pink noise right now. I've turned up the volume on this radio. I can see electrically speaking what that signal looks like. So again, this is not an acoustic measurement. This is an electrical measurement, which in my opinion is almost more important. So this would be one of the things that we would do before integrating into the system, before we're grabbing signal to hook up to any sort of converter or DSP or anything. We want to look at that signal and analyze what it is, what it looks like, and what we can use it for. In this case, this is full range, right? We have signal all the way across the spectrum, and we have plenty of bass. We have plenty of mid-range and high frequency. Um, EQ-wise, this has you know a little slump in the middle there, but it's still full range, and it's not horrible. So there's no huge uh, dips valleys, peaks, anything like that. This is relatively flat as far as that's concerned. Um, to those of you that aren't super familiar with an RTA, you are pretty much never going to see a signal that is 100% flat across that center line. That's just not realistic. That's not real life. Um, you know, so don't expect to hook up to a radio and, and or an amplifier or a factory system and see it perfectly flat across that center line, okay? That's not going to be what we mean by flat or full range. Um, full range is just going to mean that it's all the way across the spectrum here, that there's sound on all of these frequencies, there's some sort of signal present. So in this case, if I was hooking up a, a sub amplifier, and this is the rear speakers that I grabbed, and uh, you know, I want to just hook up a sub and add some bass to the system, I would be totally comfortable adding bass to this vehicle using this channel as my signal. You know, if I was to grab this and there was no information over here on the left side of the RTA where all of our base info is, I would definitely want to look for something else. So that's where this really comes into play is, you know, first thing I would be doing is just trying to identify which channels are what and what they have present on them. Um, this will also help you to determine if the output channels from, say, a factory amplifier are uh, crossed over maybe at the amplifier outputs or internally in the amplifier, or whether they're crossed over at the speaker themselves. Um, BMW is a prime example. The output channels from BMWs have always traditionally been crossed over inside the amplifier. So the speaker leads that come out of that that go to the tweeter are only carrying information for the tweeter. The leads that are going to the mid-bass driver are only carrying audio information for the mid-bass driver. Um, others like say Toyota is a classic example. They feed full range out of most of their head units and amplifiers. And then they use little caps on the tweeter or 
crossovers in the door or something along those lines to split the signal outwards over there at the speakers. So in those cases, those would be things to take into consideration when you're trying to integrate into those cars, just making sure that you're getting a signal that you can actually use for whatever your application is and whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to integrate. So one of the other things I wanna have a look at is the voltage meter. So uh, right now I wanna make sure I'm selecting my speaker level input. I have my voltage meter here and I am playing a full range uh, uh, pink noise right now. So to do a voltage reading, we would wanna use a test tone. So let me just pick a test track instead. I'll just grab like a 40 Hertz test track here real quick. And we can have um, a look at what we're working For on. guys out there who are switching between the inputs and doing different measurements, guys, um, even yesterday, I had a guy call and say that, hey, I'm connected to speakers. So here's what happens a lot of times. You're at an uh, OE amplifier and you're fishing for the speaker outputs, right? And so he's telling me, hey, uh, I'm not getting any read and on the speaker, you know, uh, the microphone is working. I finally got that figured out because I turned it on using the 48 volt, right? Yeah. Um, and I adjusted the uh, mic gain up. That's another thing. Not only do you want to make sure you turn the 48 volt on, but you're going to have to adjust the mic gain up. So it does work. It always has worked. Um, you just need to make sure you do those two things. If you switch over to speaker and you're not getting a reading, the quickest test, the quickest, easiest test is to loop an RCA from an input to the output and turn on sine wave or pink noise. If you have activity, everything is fine. It is working fine. Your fishing is not working fine. Meaning you just, you know, were, you went and got on speakers that you thought were, you know, maybe a twisted pair that you thought were speakers. Well, guess what? It's, it's not. So yeah, guess that, what? They're not speakers. So. Yeah. So, so as a test, just quickly, you know, when you have this throw a, a one foot RCA in your DMRTA pro box and just loop input to output and make sure that you have signal. Um, quickest, easiest way to test and make sure you're connected, you are seeing activity, um, and you know, you're, you're getting the response. Yep, that's a great test to do, and it's one that I show a lot of guys um, because they're curious, you know, the outputs from the DMRTA, what are they? Well, if you do that quick test, you'll find out they're five volts. You'll get five volts of RCA output out of the DMRTA. So if you're going to feed, say, a uh, you know 40 hertz test tone or a 1K test tone out of it, and you're wondering what voltage that's sent out at, if you have the DMRTA volume maxed out and you use the RCA output from your DMRTA, you're getting a five volt. Uh, tone. If you were, like Chris said, to loop an RT, uh, RCA from the output back to the input, you'll see it right there on the voltage meter on the screen that it is in fact a five volt out. So right now we are playing a test tone. Uh, let's see here. Let's take this to a uh, 40 hertz test tone. There we go. And I've got it on my speaker level input. I just turned up the volume on this radio up to max for a second just to see what we've got. And so we've got uh, 10 volts there at max volume on speaker level. So that basically tells us, um, you know, if you don't know, you could look at your uh, DMRTA checklist and it'll actually tell you, is this high or low level? Well, between five to 12 volts, we basically generally consider that to be basic deck power, which is exactly what this is. So if we did the same measurement, we grabbed a couple of speaker leads in the vehicle somewhere, maybe we found them in the B pillar or in the door sill plate or something like that. And we grabbed these and we did the same test and we got, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, 15 volts or 20 volts or something like that. We would know that we are grabbing that signal post amplifier. We've grabbed that signal in a amplified vehicle and it has, we are grabbing that signal after the amp. If we grabbed that same signal and it was say two or three volts, we would know that we're probably dealing with preamp signal and we, there is probably an amplifier in the vehicle, but it's a preamp signal that we've ran into. So those things are all on that checklist, but it's something like this with the voltmeter that really helps you when you're trying to determine where to integrate and, you know, hey, I just grabbed the signal. I don't really know what it is. I don't know if there's an amp for sure or not. That's a great way to do it. You could also do that test at the speaker itself, right? If there's a set of speakers hanging from the rear deck, you don't know if the car has an amplifier or not. You could tag onto those rear speakers, do the same test and find out if it's deck power or if it's amplified just by the voltage. So quick, easy test that you can do. 
You could also do this test with the voltmeter on RCAs. So if you have an aftermarket head unit and you're kind of questioning what the actual voltage output is, this would be a great test to be able to do. You could do this test with, um, you know, all sorts of different things. You could go through your uh, uh, demo board in your store and find out what the real voltage output is on all of these different units, things like that. One of the other things that I want to show you guys, because we are starting to run out of time here, is the oscilloscope. So I just switched to oscilloscope. I'm going to make sure that I am on my speaker inputs here, and I'm going to change my scale here a little bit. There we go. And Something so this else, is um, what this. Oh yeah, look at that. Um, something else. That... <laughs> Something else that uh, I wanted to bring up was yep. the software firmware. We've only had two firmware releases. So if you bought, you know, the DMRTA a year ago and you've been using it with your computer the whole time, everything's fine. And then you go buy a new computer and download the newest uh, yeah. software, you will have to do a firmware update. Yeah, I got them ready to go, but I'm just finishing a webinar. If you, um, <laughs> I got them. If you, uh, if you um, do that, just, you know, make sure if you go back to your old computer, you're going to want to delete the software and, and at, go to the website and get the latest software. So um, it's not, you know, with DSPs, we, we've had, you know, six or seven software releases. Uh, with this, we only have two. So you're probably not going to run into, uh, you know, a software firmware where you have to uh, update it on a regular basis. But just be mindful if you had it more than a year ago and you go switch it you know, to a new laptop, you will want to make those changes. Absolutely. <clears throat> so right now we're on the Oscope, you guys, and I just want to show you, um, this is high level input from this factory Toyota Corolla radio. I think it's out of Corolla. And this is max volume. So we can see what a beautiful signal we have there on the screen uh, at uh, volume 62 is max on this. So this is the other thing that, you know, I, I get a lot of calls from shops and they want help with tuning the DSP or setting up a LC7i or whatever the case may be. And one of the first questions I'll usually ask them is, where did we get signal? Do we know what type of signal it is? And did we find max volume? And if the answers to all of those questions or some of those questions are no, it's really hard for me to help you, okay? If you found that max volume is blank and we know that we're dealing with high level uh, signal from a basic deck, non-outboard non or premium amplified, and you know we know that it's full range or et cetera, okay, now I can help you a lot easier than going in totally blind. So this is one of those things that I usually would do, you know, it's on the, on the DMRTA checklist. It's one of the things that I would do before putting any amplifiers or any integration products into this vehicle is I would want to find out while I'm analyzing the signal, we want to find out what max volume is going to be. So like I said, <clears throat> if I'm integrating a subwoofer, let's say I'm playing a 40 Hertz test tone, I am hooked up to the oscilloscope and I'm doing high level input with the speaker level. I've grabbed my signal that I'm planning on probably using to run into my, let's say LC2i or LC2i Pro. And I wanna find out what max volume is going to be. So if this is max volume at 62, obviously this is unusable. This is not what we want to see. So I'm gonna bring this volume down until we see something usable on this screen. So. What I'm looking for is to have something that's a nice, smooth curve in there, something that doesn't have any sort of uh, shark fins or flat spots or anything like that. Um, where we see those shark fins, shark fins and flat spots is where our clipping, where our distortion is, and that's what's going to kill speakers, that's what's going to smoke subwoofers and that sort of thing. Especially with woofers where you can't hear that distortion as much, especially if it's back in a trunk and that sort of thing, I think this becomes even more important uh, in, in that scenario. So in this uh, application on this radio, I'm down to volume 48, I'll bring it up a little bit here. So I would say right around there is pretty smooth and clean. So that's volume 50 out of 62. Okay, so keep in mind in this radio, this is what we would need to tell our customer is max volume. Or if this is your own vehicle, you now know 50 is gonna be my max volume on this system. Now, 
if we were um, you know, still running all of the speakers off of this deck, you're also gonna wanna take that into consideration. Although 50 may be max on this for those uh, uh, signals that we're gonna to integrate to a subwoofer, if the rest of the system is distorting much lower than that, that's not gonna do you a whole lot of good. But if we're going to use this to run a whole system and this is the signals we're looking at, okay, great. We found that at this volume, we've got a usable signal. It's not clipping or distorting. Now what we'd wanna do is switch over to our volt meter and have a look at what we have for usable voltage. So we have, about six volts, five and a half volts there, depending on what we're looking at. And that's what we really have for usable voltage coming out of this head unit. So those are some quick tests that you can do when you're doing this. Um, I talked about outputs earlier, about being able to output things out of the DMRTA. Uh, up there towards the top of the screen, you can see sine wave, pink noise, and square wave. You're gonna wanna use the outputs on the front of your DMRTA in order to do that. So we could either use like these RCA outputs and use a RCA to headphone jack style connection. And we could use that to go into an auxiliary input, something like that. Or we could use that USB that's on the front as well and use that to go into the USB of an aftermarket or factory head unit and read it like a thumb drive. Now, uh, um, one thing that I do wanna point out that's really important on that too is you have to remember that if, it, say you're using the RCA outputs to a 3.5 and you're feeding that into a factory system, the key thing to remember there is that the DMRTA has a five volt output, okay? Which phones does your customer have that has a five volt output? None, none of them. So you wanna make sure you adjust that level using your voltage to uh, when you're sending your signal through and you're tuning so when their phone is plugged in hardwired to their factory system, you have the same output. So you can use this to check what kind of output their phone has. Usually it's, you know, uh, you know a half a volt or so. Um, so you don't want to do a tune um, for that aux input with a five volt signal going into it. Uh, you're going to saturate your inputs. You'll see clipping a lot quicker, um, stuff like that. So that's another important key point when you're feeding stuff out of the DMRTA and doing testing is to know, hey, um, I want to, you know, I should test their phone output to see what kind of signal that has so I can get the most out of that system. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and I've done that myself, um, you know, looking at the DMRTA and doing some testing with some of these radios is I have, you know, kind of forgot about that and fed a, a really hot signal out of the DMRTA into a really cheap radio. And it saturates the input so badly that even at volume one out of 60, there was instantly distortion. And I'm looking at it and I'm just going, well, there can't be distortion that low. And what it was is I was just overdriving that aux input so far past the, the point of saturation that there was no clean signal. There was no unclipped. It was clipped at minimum volume. So you just want to make sure that, uh, like Chris said, you're, you're backing that down and getting something that's, you know, similar to what they're actually going to have. We're trying to create, you know, uh, recreatable results, right? So one of the other things that I wanted to talk about is, um, like I said, up there at the top, you've got your sine wave, your pink noise and square wave outputs. If we want pink noise, we can click pink noise. And you can probably hear I've got pink noise playing, okay? That plays on all of the outputs at the same time. You don't have to tell it where to put out. It's doing that for you. Sine wave is the same thing. I can adjust the level of it here so it's not uh, deafening. Bring that down pretty low. And then I can change the frequency of it over here. So you can change this. And so if we need a you know 40 hertz uh, signal output, there we go. There's a 40 hertz signal. And then I can adjust my output level uh, to be something usable. If I bring this up, sounds like a robot, but yeah, if I need a thousand hertz signal, I can easily do that. I can also just type in here 1000 and there we go. Let me turn that off. So you get the idea. All of the uh, test tones and everything that you need are built in there and you're ready to go for that. They're with you every time you get in a car. On the polarity checker side of things, this is gonna use either the electrical inputs or the microphone to do a polarity check. So for the polarity check, this also has the uh, clicks and pops built into it, just like the SA series microphone did as well. So if you're gonna use this to do polarity checking, um, this can be post install after you've done the installation and you wanna make sure all the speakers are hooked up correctly, so on and so forth. Or this could be a pre-installation. We wanna make sure which channels are 
you know, how it was wired from the factory, I should say, because we are seeing more and more factory systems that have a couple of channels out of phase from the rest of the system in order to create some sort of, uh, you know, staging or, or openness to the system. So the most common question I get with this too is do I have to use the microphone? Can I use a set of speaker leads I found in order to find out what's positive and negative? And the answer is yes, you can. So if you take the, say, RCA outputs from your DMRTA, you feed them to the aux in of this factory stereo, and let's say you grab a couple of speaker leads behind the, uh, or under the rear deck or in a door panel. If you're playing that tone and we use the um, speaker level connector that's on here, and we go to those test leads and test those two wires, we're going to get a big positive or negative on the middle of the screen right here in this big black open space. So if it gives us a big positive, we know that the red one is hooked up to positive, the black one's hooked up to negative. If we get a big negative on the screen, you know that the wire that is uh, on your red um, test lead is actually going to be your negative lead to your speaker. So it's pretty valuable for that as well. When the install is done, you, it's not a bad idea to take the microphone, plug the mic into the DMRTA, do this same test, but take this mic up to each speaker and uh, <clears throat> try to isolate each speaker and see which ones, make sure that they're all correct. Um, as I mentioned, it's also a good test to do in a unfamiliar vehicle or vehicles that you aren't aware of. Uh, I did this test at a shop on the East Coast a few months back and um, they were working on a newer Silverado. They didn't know that the top dash speakers were actually backwards from the rest of the system in the base model truck. So it was really, really valuable. It was a two minute test, if that, it's probably a, a 45 second test. And we were able to identify that those were actually backwards from everything else. So super, super valuable for that. The SPL meter is the middle tab. This is also going to use our microphone. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that 48V is lit up and make sure that our microphone is powered on. And then we can use our um, mic to do an SPL test. The thing that's important on this to you guys is down here where it says reference mic. We wanna click on this and make sure to tell it which microphone we're using. So if we click CM10, it's gonna ask if we're sure. I'll say yes. And it's going to adjust my mic gain and um, you know put it to the right thing for that particular microphone. So that's one of those things where if you don't have this set, you can actually adjust this mic gain. It's locked for us right now, but we can um, potentially get inaccurate results. If this is unlocked and we start playing with mic gains and messing with stuff, we can start to get all sorts of different results that may not be what we were hoping for um, and definitely not be accurate. So we want to make sure to tell it which microphone we're trying to use and uh, go from there. So that pretty much takes us through the DMRTA software itself. Uh, sorry, we ran about 15 minutes over time today, you guys. Is there any other questions or anything that we need to get to, Chris? Nope, well, I think we look good. Um, I awesome. appreciate, uh, you know, you going through that stuff. Every time we talk about something, you know, there's little details here and there um, that hopefully you guys pick up on um, so you can be sure to, you know, uh, be efficient with your, your testing of systems and, and knowing exactly what you're working with. So, um, yeah, I'll let you wrap up and then I'll polish her up and uh, we'll say goodbye for the day. Sounds good. So that's one of those things that I hope for every time to you guys is that even those of you that maybe already have a DMRTA or some of you reps that are on today's call that have one that you uh, take around and show, maybe you didn't know a few things today. If you learned, you know, two new things today, then that's, that's what we're hoping for. You know, as long as uh, you guys get something out of these, um, that's, that's really the end goal. So that's what we hope for. So thanks for joining us today, you guys. Um, I think I saw a question pop up there yep. real quick. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, TNT Audio, our friends in Texas asking about um, how, let's see, how do you use the USB out to the factory radio? Great question. You're going to use the factory radio file manager. So that USB, like Matthew said, is a separate stick on it. Um, you're going to plug that uh, mail to mail from the unit into the factory USB. And then you're going to use the file manager on the source unit. So if you're plugging into like, you know, a pioneer source or a factory OE source, you would use the file manager. It's not as nice as just doing uh, my preferred way is if there's a 3.5 aux input on a factory setup, just to do the RCA um, to 3.5 and plug that in. Um, so, ooh, that's, a, that's another one, great one. Um, what are the input limitations of the scope part? That's a great question. Uh, you certainly don't wanna be using it 
um, on big bass amplifiers to, to, to really set it. it. It definitely is limited on how much voltage it can receive. Um, so we want to try to keep that below 40 volts. Um, so not big bass amplifiers. If you're doing 300 watt amplifiers, that's fine. Anything above that, you would want to go ahead and use a, 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 a oscope that can handle that level of input. So another yeah, great Yeah, this is not question. for setting up your, uh, your 3000 watt SPL amp. <laughs> this yeah. is not for that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, for mids and highs and everything, though, it's perfect for all of that stuff. So, yeah, uh, you know, we have toyed around with doing like a, you know, a step down Multiple as far as an accessory that we could use so that you could yeah. still dial it down. But, um, you know, for those big bass uh, amps, um, yeah, use it for your highs all day long. But uh, anything, you know, four, three, four hundred watts or more, just go ahead and uh, use a, a different tool for that stuff. So, yeah. Um, guys, Tony, thank you guys for being here. Um, we are uh, super proud of um, this, this, the test tools that we continue to have available. You know, we've really tried to be um, the, the company that provides solutions for you guys as far as what can be done. We're continuing to expand our product range. Um, we do have a lot more stuff coming that uh, we'll start working towards and hopefully in the next few weeks um, we can start talking about some of the, the more products coming down the road. But thanks again for joining us and we can't wait to catch up with you guys next week. Yep, sounds good guys. Thanks again for being with us and we'll see you uh, next week.